Alright guys, welcome back to another Opera Omnia video where we are going to be talking about possibly the most anticipated character for the month of August and that is none other than Setzer himself. He is going to be getting his rework and his LD weapon. Now his LD weapon is going to be the most important thing about him and that is what a lot of players are most focused on because of what his LD ability does. But the big question is, is he necessary for the upcoming Lufenias and into Lufenia Plus? Now, you guys may be surprised by the answer that I am going to give you in my should you pull section of this video. But before we get into that, we're going to go over what exactly he is going to be getting with the changes in his rework and we'll go over exactly how his LD ability works. So with that being said, if you guys do enjoy the video, consider liking the video and subscribing for future Appa Omnia content as we are getting closer and closer. As I'm making this video, actually, we are less than 100 subs away from hitting the big 3000 again, guys. I cannot thank you guys enough for the amount of support you guys have been giving me lately. And again, I cannot wait to tell you guys the big announcement towards the end of this month where I let you guys know one of the reasons why all of the support as of late and the past couple of months has been meaning so much to me and it will all come together into a complete understanding as to why. But anyways, though, Let's go ahead and jump into it, guys. Let's talk about his rework, his LD weapon, and then we'll get into the spicy part of this video, which will be should you pull on Setzer's upcoming banner. So with Setzer's rework on his Freeze Joker, it got an increase in Brave Hits, now dealing three Brave Hits. And it also got an increase in Brave Potency by a medium amount. Then after you use Freeze Joker, it now turns into an AoE HP attack that now deals full HP damage on all enemy based on the current Brave, and it does not consume Setzer's own Brave. Now with his skill 2, his red card, they gave him an additional 3 uses to it, so now he has a max usage of 9. Then, whenever you are using his red card ability, after each use except for his last HP attack, he recovers Brave to himself based on 20% of the total HP damage dealt. Setzer's LD ability, which is called Dive Bomb, is an 8 hit AoE magic Brave plus an AoE HP attack that deals full HP damage. He grants the fixed dice buff to the party for six actions, but to himself, he actually grants it for nine actions. Now, the fixed dice buff is basically the rainbow numbers that some of y'all may have seen and some of y'all may have not seen. So basically how it works is that it gives you a chance to deal brave damage dealt to be equal to the brave damage cap. And what that means is that whatever, you, whatever, uh, like say, take example, like for Setzer, right? Whatever the highest amount of brave damage he is able to do, if you are able to proc the fixed dice ability, the rainbow numbers will appear and that will be, it will show the highest amounts of brave damage that Setzer will be able to do. Now, one thing to note is that not every hit is going to be a guarantee because there is a little bit of RNG that you have to play around with this because uh, depending on how long the buff is active, there is a percentage and with that percentage, you kind of have to, you know, it's basically like uh, like flip a, flipping a coin in a way where it's like, you know, if you get head, heads uh, per hit, per brave hit, you will trigger it. So it, 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 it's kind of it's somewhat similar to that idea of how it would actually work. Now, the longer duration means the higher chances. But another important thing to know is that this does get affected by resistances such as nullified or absorbed. So if you do have anything active in terms of like enchant slash impel and the enemy is able to absorb or nullify it, 
then you're in trouble because that means that basically it will not activate at all. It will not be affecting it's basic. It's basically pointless at that point. So how it works percentages wise, and I'm going to post the uh, the percentages up on the screen for you guys so that if you want to screenshot it uh, so uh, for your own personal reference uh, and you won't have to come back to the video, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to do so. So for seven plus turns, you have a 70 percent chance of activating the fixed dice buff effects. Now, between four to six turns, you have a 50% chance to activate it. At three turns, you have a 40% chance to activate it. At two turns, you have a 30% chance to activate it. And then at one turn, you have a 20% chance to activate it. And then, of course, once the buff goes away, you pretty much have to use Setzer's LD ability to get it to uh, start or start the process all over again. Also, with the fixed dice, the party does receive a 40% attack up, a 20% HP damage dealt up, and a 30% stolen max brave overflow limit, and a 20% recovered max brave overflow limit up. Now, these same buffs, buffs will not stack, and this buff's duration cannot be extended, in case anybody thought that they would try to do that. Now, with his LD extension, with his... Uh, his LD ability, whenever the quest begins, Setzer actually does start off with the fixed dice for four actions. So right there immediately, Setzer has a 50% chance for the fixed dice to actually proc for himself. The party does not start off with this, uh, with this buff, it's only for Setzer himself. Now, while fixed dice is active, he actually extends the base duration of debuffs granted by himself by one action. Now, think about it. That is actually super convenient because that will help him out with Setzer's freeze ability. And with Setzer's freeze ability, for those who don't, do not know, whenever that is uh, inflicted on the enemy, it makes it so that uh, the enemy is unable to get any type of brave. So they will remain at whatever brave it is that they are stuck at, unless of course you shave it off. So I mean, like if they have no brave, then that's the brave that they are going to stick at. Uh, whenever you are using his LD ability, he gets an increase in total brave hits to 10. He gets an uh, an increase in brave potency by a large amount. He got an increase in, in uh, overflow limit and he also is able to recover one usage to his skill two ability, his red card up to the base value. So now we get to the point of the video where you guys figure out whether or not it is actually worth pulling for Setzer's LD weapon based off of what you have heard so far in this video and or the research that you may have done or based off of my opinions that I am going to give on Setzer. Now, Setzer, obviously, a lot of players are going to be pulling for his LD weapon for the obvious reason, his LD ability and what it does, basically making it so that if his LD ability triggers per brave hit, he will be basically capping out on the amount of, well, not him, not just him, but also uh, for, uh, for everybody in the team, will be camping out on the highest amount of brave damage that they will be able to do. So with that being said, you know, people, of course, will be jumping up off their chairs and being like, yes, I must pull for this character because it will make my Lufenia fights much easier. I'll be able to cap much faster. You know, everything will be running much more smoother and whatnot, right? So that's the thing where I am going to say that I myself actually refuse to use Setzer for that reason right there. Setzer, as good of a character that he is, he to me is the ultimate cheat card. Like he is like that one like trap card, that one Exodia card from Yu-Gi-Oh where like if you have nothing else and you have to use your final trump card he is the go to to throw into team cons and be like let's just go in let's beat this fight and let's get the hell out of here that's basically what Setzer is and because of that reason on the JP side after I pulled for him 
And look, I'm a, and I'm I look, guys. I am always 100% honest with you guys. I use Setzer may at the most two to three times, and that's it because of how powerful his mechanic was. The other reason why I did not use him is because I did not want to get used to his mechanic to the point where if I decided, hey, I want to try using other characters and their mechanics, I didn't want to get used to the fact that like, oh, they're not doing uh, max brave damage. They're not doing this. They're not doing what Setsa's doing. Let me just go back to Setsa and get used to the same thing that I have been uh, getting used to for like the past couple of weeks using Setsa. Because of that, because of that other reason, I refuse to use Setsa. I refuse to use my ultimate cheat card. And I just kept them in the sidelines because I myself as a player wanted to basically experience other characters, other mechanics and make my gameplay, my gameplay much more enjoyable. Now, because of what I said, I do not want to, you know, I, I don't, I'm not here to basically crap on Setzer. I'm not saying Setzer is bad. I'm not, you know, trying to like convince you guys and be like, oh, he, you know, if if simply loss is is saying that Setzer is not really all that, or if um if he's saying that like he is that easy to use, or if he's worried that it's gonna change everybody's gameplay, maybe I shouldn't pull for him. It's not that 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 what I just said was how I looked at him when he got released on the JP side. That is why when it comes to Setzer and, and his uh, his uh, LD ability and how it worked, as powerful as it is, it is very much helpful and a very strong LD ability, but is it actually needed? No, it really is not needed because I did just fine without using Setzer in almost all Lufenia fights with Adam. And again, I only use them at most two to three times throughout the Lufenia and into Lufenia plus error. The uh, one of the few fights that I remember using Setzer would be the upcoming boss rush, boss rush that is coming to global and then the upcoming transcendence fight that is going to be coming to global as well. I can't remember the third fight, uh, but after that, that's it. That's all I use sets are for. And that that's really about it. Like, you know, and again, I'm being 1000% honest with you guys. You know, I have no reason to lie to you. This is what I, this is, this, this is the thing about my videos that, that, uh, you know, makes me uh, a bit different, uh, as a content creator is because like, I, I just give it to you as it is. And I let you guys know how, how it was for me when uh content uh when this content or the upcoming content or the content is coming up here in the next like month or so um happened when it got released in the jp side this is what i give to you guys and this is what i let you know hey this is what i experienced and this is what i'm letting you guys know and then you guys can be the judge on like how it is that um how it is that you take it so again set sir a lot of players are for sure going to pull for him I am not going to be the person to be like, hey, you shouldn't pull for him. You decide and I will keep to my guns when I say that it is your decision on whether or not it is worth. I mean, excuse me. It is your decision on whether you should be pulling for sets of LD weapon. Sets of LD ability and his weapon. Oh, yeah, his LD ability. Same thing. Uh, it's it's very powerful. It is strong and it will definitely help you out. Uh, if you are struggling in Lufenia fights or if you are trying to make your Lufenia runs much smoother, then Setzer's LD ability is definitely one to go for. But for me myself, I will throw some tickets to see if I can get Setzer's LD ability. But if I do not get it, I will be just fine without it. You know, it's not something that is necessary because there are plenty of other units that I have pulled before Setzer, and I, there are plenty of other units that I will be pulling after Setzer's uh, banner goes away that I can easily use that will make my Lufenia and into Lufenia Plus era fights. They might, they might be a little extra, a little extra. They might be a tiny bit harder, 
But at the same time, just knowing that, that I was able to do it with Fat Setzer is a much more satisfying feeling than knowing that I could just throw my Exodia card at the enemy and just, you know, bloop, bloop, done. You know what I mean? I like a challenge personally, but that's just me. So that's going to be it for the video, guys. Again, you know, Setzer, his LD ability, it's strong. If you're going to pull for it, go for it, you know? If you're not going to pull for it, wait on it. It does come back later on, if I'm not mistaken. You have another opportunity later on to pull for his L, the ability. But uh, other than that, though, guys, that's going to be it for my video. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, did, uh, did, uh, do uh, consider liking the video, good God, and subscribing for future Oppo Omnia content. And do let me know what your pull plans are going to be uh, for Setzer's upcoming LD weapon release. Thank you so much for watching. And I will catch you guys in my next video.